Hi, I'm Corrine Smith. And uh, welcome to the first ep episode of Studying Thoreau. In this series, I will talk about resources that you may want to use to study the life and writings of American author and naturalist Henry David Thoreau. I won't be asked, uh, talking about interpretation. I will leave that up to you. Instead, I will show you where to find the information that you're looking for. Because after you read Walden, you're either going to be impacted by what he wrote or you might be at least mildly interested in what he had to say and you might want to read more. Well, what else is there? What should you read next? Where can you find all this stuff? Which editions are best ones for you? These are the kinds of questions I hope to answer in this series. I've been a fan of Henry David Thoreau since I read Civil Disobedience and Walden in high school in the early 1970s. He has stayed with me ever since, so to speak. I worked as a ver uh, librarian in a variety of venues over the course of my career. In the last 20 years specifically, I've done a lot of Thoreau research on my own. I am the author of Westward I'll Go Free, Tracing Thoreau's Last Journey, which is about his trip to Minnesota in 1861 and also the middle grade biography and activity book, Henry David Thoreau for Kids, His Life and, and Ideas with 21 Activities. Um, currently, I serve as the supervisor of the shop at Walden Pond uh, for the Thoreau Society, but I'm producing this series on my own, and I wanna make it clear that even though I work for the Thoreau Society, I'm basing my book recommendations on being a Thoreau fan myself and being a librarian and a researcher second. So when I mention a book here, this does not necessarily give it an official endorsement by the Thoreau Society. Although if we sell it at the shop, we've made a conscious decision to do that. All of the books that I mention in this series will be in bibliographies on my website, www.travelswiththoreau.com. We're low tech here. Um, and the bibliographies, uh, full disclosure, will be links to the shop at Walden Pond or to an aggregate, aggregate site for used book dealers because some of these books are gonna be out of print that I talk about. Um, so in today's episode, I'm going to recommend six things that you have for your Thoreau library. Um, depending on your choices, you can probably assemble a decent Thoreau research library for under $100, okay? Um, the choices are wide and you'll see that in a few minutes, um, but the choices are up to you. And then you'll have everything you need right at your fingertips, like some of the rest of us do. So, number one, low tech. Number one here, a copy of Walden, duh. It was published in, 18, in 1854, and except for a couple of months or maybe a year at the end of Henry Thoreau's life, it has not yet been out of print since. Hundreds of editions of Walden have been printed in all kinds of different languages. Whichever one you start out with is probably going to be your favorite. This is the one I bought at the Walden Bookstore at the Park City Mall in Lancaster, Pennsylvania in the spring of 1975. Looks like Peter Max did the cover. Um, other people have told me that they started out with this one too, which is kind of cool. And maybe you did too. Maybe you still have it. Um, this is the one I underlined at first. It has still all my underlinings in it that I did not use with a ruler, so I was kind of messy. Um, I had to tape the spine, you know, and it's falling apart. Uh, so I do have other ones, but this is, this is my favorite. This one also has civil disobedience in the back of it, uh, the essay Civil Disobedience. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, which edition of Walden is best? It is totally up to you. There are paperbacks, there are hardbacks, there are all kinds of different ones with different introductions by all kinds of different people. The text is the same, the difference is in the packaging. At the shop at Walden Pond, we sell between eight and 10 different editions of Walden. Again, the choice is the cost and the, public, and the publishing style and the, and the packaging. Like I said, some may have, uh, you know, introductions by people, some may have extra features. What you want is the full text, okay? So make sure when you look for Walden, you do not get abridged, you get the unabridged full text because I guarantee you if you start out short, you're gonna want the whole thing later. So why not start out with the whole thing? 
You should also know that there, over the years, there have been three annotated editions of Walden. This is the newest one by Jeff Kramer of the Thoreau Institute at Walden Woods. And so Jeff gives you background information in the margins. The main text is in the middle and in the margins are the annotations. Defines all the Greek and Roman mythology that Henry references. Uh, tells you who the old English poets are that Henry quotes. Uh, defines cultural references and literary references that the Rose audience would have known, but we sure don't. Um, so that's what an annotated Walden does. And there's there's been three. I'm going to talk a lot about Waldens in the next episode, but just to let you know, um, getting an annotated Walden is an option if if that's what you want. But again, get one with full text, please, because you're going to want it anyway. Walden was Henry's second book. First one was A Week on the Concord and Merrimack Rivers. And then of course, he wrote some travel essays that became travel narratives like Cape Cod, whoops, ah, like the Maine Woods, let's drop it. So all these other things, what do you do to get all these other things? Well, number two, you get a compilation volume like the Portable Thoreau, okay? Um, this is my well-worn copy. Um, there is also a newer one that Jeff Kramer of the Thoreau Institute, again, uh, compiled. There's the Penguin Classics uh, Portable Thoreau. So these are nice compilation volumes that have all kinds of different things in it. So you don't have to buy all of these other volumes if you want to. Compilation volume probably will have all of Walden, Civil Disobedience as an essay, a number of other essays. It will have excerpts from some of these other books, not the full one, but it'll have excerpts from some of these other books and it will have a smattering of Henry's poetry. Did you know he was a poet? <laughs> has, has smatterings of Henry's poetry. That's what a good compilation volume is. So if you are faced with some, just look at the table of contents, see what it has. Does it have what you want in it? The kicker is, that when they give you part of some of these other books, eventually you're gonna want the whole thing. That, that, that's just the way it is. But anyway, that's a fast and easy way to uh, get a whole bunch of more of Thoreau's writing. So number two was a compilation volume. Now, we often say that Henry David Thoreau is probably the most quoted and least read American author, maybe international author. Um, not, uh, you find his quotes everywhere, everywhere. And starting in the 60s is when you started to find his quotes everywhere because everything that he was writing about was in the forefront. Civil rights, rights of the individual, the role of government in our lives, nature and in the environment, yada, da, da, da. So lots of quotes out there. Not everybody reads where the quotes come from. If you have a, one of those good compilation volumes, you probably have, you know, the best quotes in there, but how do you get them and how do you, how do you find them quickly? Well, number three, you get a quote book. Okay. I once did research and I figured out that at least every year, 25 different quote books were released with the row quotes in it because they're all in public domain. His writings are all in public domain. You could compile any kind of quote book you want to on a theme, you know, um, dogs and cats have been done, uh, but you know, and nature is done a lot. And then people put photographs with them, yada, 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 all kinds of different quote books. Here's a basic one, it's by Dover Publications. It's three bucks, we're talking basic here, okay? Skinny, it's, it's only three bucks. What you want in a quote book, however, is you want attributions. You want the quotes to say where the quote came from. There's a lot of misquoting going on about Henry, you know, and yeah, sure, you can look it up on the internet. How do you know that he actually said it? So, uh, quote books. So there's a basic one by Dover. Uh, there's lots of ones by themes. Our friend Richard Smith did a nice one for Applewood Books a few years ago. It's kind of skinny too. It doesn't have all the ones that you think and it still has good ones. That he, he did a good job. Uh, but so all kinds of different quote books, but the mother load is the quotable Thoreau, again, compiled by Jeff Kramer of the Thoreau Institute. See how fat it is? Uh, they're in here by topic, so is the Dover. Uh, and then there's uh, an extensive um, index 
and it gives the it gives the citations so that you know where it came from so that if you're interested in what Henry said you can go back to the source that's what you're going to want uh, I guarantee you if you get a, a, a basic quote book that just says Thoreau said it and you can't find out where he said it you're going to want you're going to want the full thing eventually so get one that has the um, citations already in it okay I will have more to say about quote books in an upcoming episode as well. So, so far, to reiterate, number one is a Walden. Number two is a compilation volume of his other writings. Number three is a quote book. So now we're up to number four, his journal. Henry David Thoreau kept a journal for 25 years, from 1837 to 1861. Started when Mr. Emerson said to him, do you keep a journal? Henry said, I do now. I'm paraphrasing. So from November 1850 on, he pretty much wrote every single day. Some of what he wrote in there became parts of Walden and some of his other essays and travel narratives. But a lot of it is unique. A lot of nature observations, things that were happening in Concord and the country at the time, questions he asks himself about plants that he sees or about things that he sees out in society. Lots more. So the question we often get from Thoreauvian newbies is how can I get a whole copy of Thoreau's journal? And the quick answer is you can't, at least not a complete one, all in one package. Again, there are compilation volumes of journal excerpts. The biggest one right now, fat, the biggest one right now is this paperback from New York Review Books. It has an introduction by John Stilgo and compiler Damien Seals went through Thoreau's journal and picked out the best selections from it. So any of these compilation volumes, you are at the mercy, so are the quote books, you are at the mercy of the compiler of what they think is important, okay? Um, so again, keep that in mind when you, when you are uh, considering buying it. Now, Jeff Kramer, again, also published a journal volume called I to Myself, and it's annotated. Again, he defines all the references, but again, you're up, you're left up to his decision of what's important. Um, I have to admit that I don't use either one of those journal volumes. I don't use either one of those compilations. I'm going to talk about journals again in another episode, but the bottom line first is, quickly, Thoreau's journal was first published as much as it could be in 1906, where it formed 14 volumes of a 20 volume set produced by Houghton Mifflin Company. And in 1962, Dover Publications went back to those 14 volumes and it copied them and it made a big, look how big this is, upside down. Look how big this is, big two volume set called the Journal of Henry D. Thoreau gleaned from the writings of Henry D. Thoreau by Houghton Mifflin from 1906. And the way they compiled these four, those 14, condensed is the word, Corrine, come condensed those 14 volumes into two is that they printed the pages with four of the original pages on each page. So it's exactly the way they printed it from the version that they did. Okay, there's a little bit of scholarly in there, but that's it. Okay, so scholars and purists in the Thoreauvian world will say, well, even this is not complete. You're right. Even this is not complete because the editors did excise some things that they didn't think was important. And one of Thoreau's journal volumes was missing at the time that the 1906 was printed. So there are some things missing, admittedly. But this is the, for the longest time, this was the, the 1906 and then this after 1962 was the biggest way that you could get the journal, the fullest way that you could get the journal. Now, these are not in print anymore. Um, and so you can, I'm gonna have links to, so you can find a used dealer for them. Um, you can find each one separately. Sometimes you can find them as a set. As I am recording this video, um, I have seen ones that are less than $100 a piece. Um, this is what I have on my coffee table, along with the quotable Thoreau, my portable Thoreau. That's how I can answer a lot of questions on Facebook like that, because I've got them all right there. Now, I started to say that the Thoreauvian purists and scholars are going to say this isn't the whole thing, and they're going to recommend the Princeton editions. 
I'm not going to go into the Princeton editions in this episode. I will do that in another one for advanced, your advanced library, because yes, uh, people are going back to the manuscripts and are going through one at a time, but they're not complete yet and they are expensive and but, but, but. So I will talk about them another time. So let's see, what are we up to? We have Walden, we have compilation, we have a quote book, we have a journal, and then we have, and my cat knocked over by number five. Thank you, Jackie. She knocked under my number five. You need, number five, a biography of Thoreau. The best one right now came out in 2017 for the Bicentennial. It's Henry David Thoreau, A Life by Laura Dossel Walls, Notre Dame uh, professor and the leading Thoreau scholar of our day. Um, full disclosure, disclosure, I know Laura and she wrote the preface to my uh, Westward I Go Free. So thank you, Laura, again. Um, she's a terrific and compelling writer and she went back and did all the research again. Uh, didn't take any, any word for anything. Uh, and so this one is available in hardback and paperback. The two previous biographies are still good biographies, classic biographies. I'm going to do a, an episode on the biographies too. So this is not all of them. Okay. The other two previous best biographies were um, Walter Harding's Days of Henry Thoreau and Robert Richardson's Henry Thoreau, A Life of the Mind. Um, these are my worn copies. Okay. You can see, you can get this is Dover, and you can, you can get a much better copy now. Um, these are still good ones. Uh, I still use Harding a lot. It's in chronological order. Richardson's more thematic. Um, you've got people in the, in the world that'll choose one or the other. Um, but again, the newest one and the most complete one is Laura's um, Henry David Thoreau, A Life. Came out in 2017. So that's five. The sixth one, ah, she didn't get this one. The sixth one and last volume that I recommend for your basic Thoreau Research Library is Walden Pond, A History by Barksdale Maynard. If you think that the only thing that ever happened to Walden Pond was that Henry lived there for two years, two months, two days, uh-uh. Lots of eye-opening things in here. Uh, it's probably one of the most argued over and cared about and protested over pieces of property ever and is now currently Walden Pond State Reservation run by Department of Conservation and Recreation for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which is a, it's a big mouthful. This will be an eye opener and it will tell you more and it will put into context the row in the kind of history, in, including the town of Concord because Walden Pond is in the town of Concord. So those are my six recommendations for you. First, A. Walden. Two, a compilation volume. Three, a quote book. Four, some kind of journal thing. I love the Dover. I hope you can find one from a used book dealer. Five, a bigly, bigly, uh, biography. <laughs> a biography. And six, Walden Pond of History by Barksdale Maynard. So those are my recommendations, my recommendations for your basic Thoreau library. Again, I work for the Thoreau Society, but I'm producing this series on my own as a Thoreau fan and a researcher, and so I hope it was helpful for you. If you'd like, you can subscribe to my channel. You can put a little thumbs up down there below. You can ring the bell up above to get notifications of when I do this again. I am considering a whole series of these, you know, looking at most of these categories more in depth. Again, I am not going into interpretation. That is up to you. There are as many interpretations of Thoreau's words are as they are as there are people who have read him. So, thank you for joining me on this first episode of Studying Thoreau. My name is Kareen, and I will see you next time when we discuss all the Waldens. That should be fun. Anyway, you won't want to miss it. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Have a thoroughly wonderful day.